Does God approve of abortion? Abortion refers to the willful termination of a pregnancy in which process a human embryo or fetus is killed. Many support abortion procedures claiming uh, that it's a woman's right to choose what she does with her body and whether she desires to continue the pregnancy or not. Others will focus on the issue of various circumstances of unwanted pregnancies or pregnancies in which the unborn babies are believed to possess de developmental problems. Yet the real issue that we want to talk about in this uh, short study is how does God view an abortion? And so let's look at that question, does God approve of abortion? And let's let the scriptures answer that question for us. The first thing we need to consider is that God is the giver of life. You know, it's often tempting for people to become their own gods or to view modern science as being a god that is in control of life and death, like we get to choose. After all, many people believe that life has originated as the product of random chances involved in an evolutionary process. And we have these common thinkings in, um, in our world today. And if this view was correct about how life originated, then it may be reasonable to view people as having the right to choose who will live and who will die. Yet when you recognize that God really does exist and His Word is true, you should quickly discover that it is God and that it is not us who is the giver of life. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, it describes God creating human life on day 6 of creation week. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. Furthermore, Genesis 2 gives more details about how God created the first two human lives. In verse 7, it tells us the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. In verses 21 and 22, it tells us, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. And then God gave the people he created in his image the responsibility to procreate, as Genesis 1 verse 28 shows us. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it, rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. Therefore, what we need to conclude from all of this is that any life that exists has God as its origin, because God has given life. In fact, the scriptures even demonstrate that further. For example, in Job 33 and verse 4, it says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Isaiah 42 and verse 5 says, This is what God, the Lord, says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. So it is God who is the giver of life, and that is critical. The second thing we need to look at as we answer the question, does God approve of abortion, is that the unborn are fully human. You know, perhaps someone believes these fundamental truths about the origin of life, but does not believe an unborn child is truly a human life, and therefore does not believe this unborn child must be protected. However, the Bible demonstrates that God's perspective is clearly that an unborn child is 
a human being just as much as any person. For example, Luke, in his gospel record, calls John the Baptist a baby. In Luke chapter 1 and in verse 41, while he was still inside his mother's womb, and it even says he leaped in that particular passage. Furthermore, God gave the same punishment under the Old Testament law for those who caused the death of an unborn baby as he does for someone who murders any person. Just on the section concerning an unborn child, it says in Exodus 21, verses 22 through 25, when men get in a fight and hit a pregnant woman so that her children are born prematurely, but there is no injury, the one who hit her must be fined as the woman's husband demands from him, and he must pay according to judicial assessment. If there is an injury then you must give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, bruise for bruise, wound for wound. So there was responsibility if that unborn child were to die or get injured in other ways. The third thing we should look at as we think about the question, does God approve of abortion, is that each unborn life has been created by God. So it's not just that God considers each unborn child a living human being while he or she's in the womb. More than that, he actually considers each life as one he created. For God did not just create the first humans and then let nature run its course, so to speak. Rather, there is an essential part that God plays in each human life. For example, God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5, the word of the Lord came to me. He says, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So God told Jeremiah in this particular passage that He had formed Jeremiah in the womb. God had done that. God had set him apart before he was born. So God clearly is showing he has a part in doing this. But it's not just with Jeremiah. We see David writing in Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16, For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous, and I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began." So David wrote that it was God who created his inward parts and knit him together in his mother's womb. God had a key role in all of this. It wasn't just the natural processes that God has set into motion. Therefore, we can confidently say that every unborn human life has been remarkably and wondrously made by God in verse 14. But then... As we think about this question, does God approve of abortion? We need to build on these three points and then recognize that the unjust killing of a human life is condemned as murder. Now, very few would argue that murdering another human being is wrong, legally and morally. And certainly the Bible agrees, and God has forbidden murder. We can see it in the Old Testament, in Exodus 20 and verse 3, one of the Ten Commandments, do not murder. Romans 13 and verse 9 in the New Testament makes reference to the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not covet. And any other commandment are summed up by this commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So having established the fact that God considers the unborn child a living human being, he has created in his image, well, there can be no other conclusion besides that abortion is murder and is condemned by God. 
In fact, we have already seen that God did institute a punishment under the Old Testament law concerning those who would cause an unborn child to die, as we read in Exodus 21, verses 22 through 25. Today, God has warned all murderers that there will be an eternal punishment for them in the fires of hell, Revelation 21 and verse 8. The, the cowards, faithless, detestable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So this is what God has, has said will happen, of course, unless they repent and seek his forgiveness. So we must reject any unjust killing of a human life, recognizing it is murder. And certainly as we have studied concerning abortion, abortion is an unjust killing of a human life. That is how God views it and how we should view it as well. So God absolutely does not approve of abortion. In fact, he calls it murder. Although it is possible for someone who has had an abortion or even multiple abortions to be forgiven through Jesus Christ, because we can be forgiven of any sin that we have committed through Jesus, but it is not acceptable to ignore what God teaches that is applicable to abortion and to think that such is acceptable to Him.